I'm gonna go out on a limb here and say that this is the single most powerful tool in photo editing, so you have to know it. It's no coincidence that you're gonna find it inside of Photoshop, Lightroom, Luminar, any other photo editor worth its salt, it's gonna have the curves tool inside it. Now, admittedly, it may seem a little daunting if you've not used it before, or you're not really familiar with the concepts, but I'm gonna start really simple, walk you through the fundamental concepts, and build on that. And so by the end of it, you're gonna have a tool set at your disposal that you can start applying to your work and really level up your photo editing. For this demonstration, I'm using Luminar Neo. However, you can use any photo editor that has curves. The concepts are gonna be applicable to anything. I have 10 identity photos of my daughter on a rope swing and by the end of the video we're going to have 10 differently processed images so let's dive into it and see what we can do so let's open up the first photo come to edit and our curves tool exists in develop raw just here and so we just need to expand the curves tab here and let's start simple let's just brighten this photo up so all we need to do is click on the line here about midway up and that's going to talk into the mid tones of the photo and as i boost those up everything gets brighter conversely if i was to bring this point down everything's going to get darker and the really nice thing with luminar is as i move this line around you can see that the background graphic which is the histogram that actually changes to represent the brightness distribution that we have in our photo and we can see that before we made any changes to the curve we have a large spike on the left hand side of the histogram and that's just saying that on the left hand side these represent the dark pixels and we have a lot of dark information in this photo we don't have too much on the right hand side and that is our bright pixels and if we look around you can only see a little bit of the sky poking through here we have her skin tones here so obviously we're not going to see much of a distribution of data or any spikes over this side of the histogram everything's dark all this dark foliage and that can be useful to us because we might decide well you know what based on that histogram my photo's a little bit dark so what I want to do is just bring this midpoint up so we've gone from a darker image to a brighter image super simple that's a mid-tone boost which is akin to just boosting up the exposure of our photo the next thing I want to show you is a staple of the curves tool so useful and that is for adding contrast and we do that by dropping down the shadows brightening up the highlights, therefore increasing that contrast, and we do it with what is known as an S-curve. Let me show you that. Let's open our second version of Amelia here, jump into the Develop Raw tab, and again, we have access to our curves. And this time, I'm just gonna add two points on my curve. So previously, when we put a point on the line and lifted that up, everything got brighter, because as soon as we go above this 45 degree line, things get brighter, and as soon as we drop below the 45 degree line, things get darker. So we can use that knowledge to actually create contrast. So what we're gonna do is have a point further to the right on the line this time. So that's gonna talk more into the highlights and I'm gonna lift that up. And currently that looks very similar to our mid-tone boost, but watch what happens when I put a point lower in the curve and drop it down. So I'm gonna come about 25% of the way up the line here and this time I'm just gonna bring this point down. And now this trusty S shape we've created has given us that lovely contrast. So let's look at our before and our after, and you can see that lovely contrast pop that this has introduced. So we've dropped the shadows, boosted the highlights, created contrast, super easy. Some people like to put three points on the curve so that they can make sure that the mid-tones don't change. They'll put a point bang in the middle, it won't move, the shadows come down, the highlights go up. But as long as you can see that the S that you've created intersects with that 45 degree line at the central point, you're good to go, you don't need that third point. So here we've increased the contrast, which I find to be one of the more useful applications for the curve tool. But what if you actually wanna go the other way and reduce the contrast? Well, it's really easy, we just do the opposite. Let me show you. So we'll open up the third iteration of this photo, and this time, rather than putting a point in the shadows and dropping it down, we're gonna do the opposite and brighten the shadows up, and we're gonna balance that out by grabbing the highlights and not letting them get any brighter. We're gonna darken them down. I don't wanna make this too extreme. I want it to be nice and subtle, and just like last time, you can see that the midpoint on my curve intersects with this 45 degree line, therefore saying that the center point, the midpoint is not getting any brighter, it is not getting any darker, it's staying with the same brightness level. Let's have a little look at our before and our after. This time we've reduced contrast. 
Now this is really cool, not only can we manipulate the curve itself, but we can actually change the start and the end points of the curves. So we can actually manipulate where true black and true white falls on our curve, or if we don't even have pure black or pure white in our photo, we can create it with curve. With curve? With curves. So let me show you how to do that now. So how is that useful? Well, if I decide that I want the sky to be a bit brighter, I can use curves to do that. I'm not just putting a point here and brightening things up. I can say I want to make the sky pure white, and that's actually gonna bring more brightness, more contrast into the whole photo. So I can shift this over to the right until I feel like, yeah, I'm happy with that. And look at this lovely increase in brightness level as well. Here's our before, here's our after. Already the exposure is better. And now if we feel like some of these areas that are pretty dark but aren't pure black should be pure black, well, we can just grab the point on the left-hand side and start moving that over. And it can be quite helpful to have a visual representation of where you're clipping out to pure white or pushing things down into pure black. And you can do that just by pressing J on your keyboard and then you're going to see a visual warning. So now if I grab the left hand point and start bringing that over, you're going to see all of this blue start to appear, which is saying, hey, you've gone to pure black in these areas. And we can use that warning to help us create the contrast we want in our photo and be throwing away only the black pixels that we really don't care about. And once we've got our black and white points set, we can just press J to remove those warnings and now come back over and fine tune our curves. So for an actual edit, one of the first things I'd like to do for this particular photo is actually bring the mid-tones up so that we're having a brighter photo. I may also want to add in some contrast. So I'm gonna put a point on the right-hand side representing the highlights, and as you can see as I boost that up, her skin gets very bright indeed. So what I'm gonna do is just keep an eye on her skin tones and just play with this until I get this to a nice bright point and then I'm gonna come down into the shadows and I can either put a point there and bring it down and create more contrast, creating that S like we did before, or alternatively, I could actually boost that up and I didn't plan on covering this, so bonus, this is what's known as an M curve, where you're actually boosting up the shadows and the highlights, but not introducing contrast because you're keeping the midpoint lower than where you've raised the shadows, raised the highlights, so that's an M curve. So that's pretty useful as well. But I think we're gonna bring this back down just a little bit so we are keeping a nice amount of contrast. And I'm gonna call that my clean edit. Let's have a look at our before and our after. So this is our original, and look at the pop that we can introduce just from having to play around with that curve before and after. And the nice thing is you can always come back in and tweak things, like I feel like her skin's just getting a little bit overexposed, so I can bring that highlight point back down. Here's our before, here's our after. You see, I told you it was easy. Right, things are getting interesting. Now we're building our knowledge base. So let's take things a little bit further. Let's get a bit more creative. And I'm gonna show you a technique for creating a more faded kind of vintage look, okay? So again, really easy to do. Now we've got our fundamentals. So let's open up our fifth iteration of the photo, come into the edit section and open develop raw. And the key to success here is manipulating our black point and our white point. So you can see as I take our line that was originally a 45 degree line and I actually bring it down, the flatter we get, the less contrast we get. And as I put it dead flat, we have just created gray. So what we can do is lift the black so that they are no longer pure black, they're more of a gray. And what we can do with the whites is just bring those down so they're no longer a pure white, but they're a softer, muted look. And if we want to create this vintage look, but we're not really happy with the lack of contrast, well, simple. We just come in and add our trusty S curve to what we've created. And there you go. We've got the best of both worlds, a faded look with contrast. So here's our before, here's our after, before and after. Now you don't need to go as extreme as that, but you get the idea of how to create that look. And this particular faded look, I'll be honest, it made me a lot of money when I was doing wedding photography. It was really popular. So what if you wanna take this look and push it one step further with a bit of color grading as well? Like, can you color grade with curves? Well, absolutely you can, and it's one of my favorite ways to do it. So let me show you how. We'll come back to our catalog and open up our next version of the photo. And let's do a very quick curve manipulation on this. Let's do a kind of vintage look, but not quite as extreme as what we created before. And one of the things that I really love about Luminar's curves that is exclusive to Luminar is when you grab the top or the bottom point and you move it, all the other points move proportionally 
based on that adjustment whereas in other programs you move one point and it's only that point that moves so you have to kind of make adjustments to each one individually but anyway here we go we've got another curve over the top of this how would we color grade this well let's say that we want to push some yellows into the highlights and complement that with some blues in the shadows we see these three colored dots that we have here these are what are known as channels so if we jump into our blue channel we have another 45 degree line which is a representation of the blues so if I put a point on this and I lift it up we're saying put more blue into our photo and if I pull it down below the 45 degree line although it appears that we're putting yellow into the photo what we're actually doing is saying remove the blue so just through those three color channels we have access to all the colors so each color is balanced by another color so it's kind of like a seesaw teeter-totter for you Americans that kind of effect so blue goes up yellow comes down red goes up cyan comes down green goes up magenta comes down or vice versa it goes the other way as well so with that knowledge we can actually make some nice fine tunements i'm pretty sure fine tunement isn't a real word so let me just show you instead Okay, if I want to inject blue into the shadows, I just grab the left hand point on the blue curve channel and I start moving that up. And you can see that all of the dark pixels are starting to be imbued with this sense of blue. Conversely, if I grab the point on the top right, which talks into the highlights and I start bringing that down, we're gonna be removing blue from the highlights or therefore introducing yellow into those highlights. So you can see that this is actually quite nicely balanced. Yeah, it's far too extreme, but you get the idea. We're adding blue in the shadows and we're adding yellow in the highlights. So let's have a little toggle of our before and our after before and after and you can see that not only have we adjusted the luminosity i.e the brightness using the curves adjusted the contrast but we've also done some color grading as well so if we wanted to we could jump into the red channel for example and in addition to the changes that we made to the highlights and the shadows we could actually grab the midpoint of the reds and say you know what i want this photo to be redder or we can bring it down and say do you know what take the reds away i want a kind of greeny more foresty look to this so there you go before and after those creative choices are really up to you so hopefully you can already see the power that we have here with this tool you know we're dealing with contrast luminosity exposure all that good stuff and color grading as well so far for demonstration purposes i've stuck to only using the curve tool however what if we comboed that with other color tools as well you really can take things like i said to the next level Okay, so this time with the edit, let's combine with our curves a couple of options that we have with the color tools here. So obviously we can grab the color temperature and increase that, warm it up or cool it down. So one option that we have is warming it up and we can really push a lot of orange in here and to the point you're thinking, well, that's way too much. Maybe a bit of magenta as well. But one thing that you can do when you push the color temperature this far is then balance it out by just grabbing the saturation slider and just reducing that. So I'll just take away a little bit of the tint there maybe increase some of the vibrance as well so we've already got quite a significant color toning going on here so here's our before here's our after and now we can combine that with some of the other methods that we've learned with curves so i might just bring the black point up slightly make sure we keep some contrast by dropping down the shadows bring up the mid tones and the highlights as well and now I could counterbalance the warmth that we created with the temperature here by jumping into the blue channel there. And we can actually just grab that shadow point again and just introduce a little bit of blue into the shadows and pull the midtones down just so that we're not affecting the midtones or the highlights either. You know, you can really get creative. You can jump into the green channel, for example. We could, you know, push a little bit more green into this image if we wanted to, which might suit it because it's kind of a foresty kind of look. Maybe we might want a little bit of the red in the midtones. We could take more of it away entirely up to you so just by having a little play around with the curves introducing a little bit of warmth through the color temperature and we've been able to go from our original image here to something that's much more stylized it's almost got like an old-fashioned warm retro vibe going on so it may be completely too much for what you're after but you can see that using this methodology you can use the same concepts but just dial it back a little bit or you can even go even more heavy-handed and one of the great things with this technique is it allows you to bring consistency to a whole range of images so if you've got a series you've worked on you can apply something like this as a preset and get a consistent 
consistent look across the whole board and that just helps to unify that collection of images. So it's a really nice way to do that. So now we've actually covered quite a lot looking at manipulating color with curves, manipulating the luminosity values. So now we've got a good understanding of what we can do with them. Let's jump back to something easier. Let's look at black and white images and look at how we can manipulate the curve to better create black and white. Okay, game. we'll just jump into develop raw and the way we're going to control our black and white this time is just by grabbing the saturation slider, pulling that all the way down and normally this is a really bad idea for creating a black and white. You're going to be devoid of contrast, it's not going to look good. But now with what we know about curves, we can actually come in and probably create a pretty impactful black and white. So I'm just going to push those black and white points just to where I want them and now I can actually start to play with the tone curve and actually get this black and white looking much more punchy. So there we go, here's our before, here's our after, beautiful black and white simply with desaturation and a slight S curve and the manipulation of the black and the white points. So here's our before, here's our after. So now we've got a handle on using one curve tool. I want to level you up and let's look at a technique where we can actually use two curves to create more control over our image. Let's do that. So let's keep things simple and we're going to do another black and white. So I'm going to come into the edit section again. I'm going to jump into develop raw. We're going to come down and we will desaturate our photo, adjust the black and the white points, make a little S in our curve just to give us some more contrast. And now what I'd like to do is break the uniformity of the tonal distribution. So what do I mean by that? Well, currently the whole photo is being controlled only by this curve here. But what if we could control different areas in the photo for a specific purpose? So for example, if I wanted to actually mute down the background so that my daughter just popped out of the image just a little bit more, we can absolutely do that. So all I need to do is actually just close down develop raw and I want to have a new instance of develop, but because I haven't done any other tools at the moment, I can't access a new version of develop at the moment. So all I need to do is just change any tool, it doesn't matter what one, and now we can access a brand new version of develop. And so I'm going to come down to my curves and this time, how about we just sort of mute the background. We're just going to sort of kill this down. Let's even bring the whites down as well. So we're muting that. We're creating a much flatter version of this photo and we could even bring it down so it's a bit darker in the background, kind of real moody and not worry too much about the contrast. And now I'm going to come up to masking and what I can do is actually just erase this effect to reveal that lovely contrasty version that we created underneath. So I'm going to move to my erase brush and I'm going to bring the strength of this down and I'm just going to click and I'm going to start painting over my daughter. Let's increase the size of the brush here and just do a couple of passes. And now we have a black and white photo where there's lovely rich contrast over my daughter and we have a more washed out and muted kind of background around her. So here's our before, here's our after. So that's a nice example of how we can start to use curves to control our image locally to bring impact to certain areas and dial back other areas. So that's one of the reasons that I really like Luminar Neo because we can actually layer this effect up. So if you don't have it yet and you want to at least check it out, I've got a discount code in the description below. Before I wrap this video up, I want to put on screen each of those edits that we created and bearing in mind they were all done with one tool, the Develop Raw tool, and within that pretty much all of them were done specifically and uniquely with the curves tool. So let's take a look. We kept things simple in our first image and we merely brightened things up with a mid-tone boost. In this version we went more contrasty by adding our classic S curve and a byproduct of that is you will also increase your saturation. Conversely in this version where we reduced contrast we've actually got less saturation. And this is our first version where I would consider this to be a more complete and comprehensive edit where we've moved the black points, moved the white points, worked on the contrast and also brightened the photo as well. You certainly don't have to go as heavy handed with this look, but this is how to do a faded vintage look. We lift the blacks and we drop the whites and the contrast you put into the image as well is entirely up to you. Not only are curves great for controlling our luminosity values, they are also brilliant for colour grading, as we can see here in this example. This one was the first time I combined curves with another tool by introducing some colour temperature and just dropping that saturation back, but it certainly shows you when you combine curves with your other editing tools, you really start to take control of your edit. 
And if you're into black and white photography, the Curves tool is imperative for working with your contrast. And if you really feel like taking the reins on your photo editing, you can start to apply curve effects to specific parts of your images for ultimate control. I've tried to cover a lot here, but if there's any hints and tips that you guys know of that I might have missed out on, leave them in the comments below just to help everyone who's watching. We're all trying to learn together. So I thank you so much for watching. If you haven't subscribed yet, you can click right there and why not check out another video of mine, which is appearing right there. I'll see you in that one. Thanks so much. Bye for now.